We now have science-backed tools to prevent and reverse wrinkles. I'm Dr. Michael Chua. I'm a board-certified ophthalmologist, and in this video, I'm going to discuss the evidence-backed ways in which you can prevent and treat your facial wrinkles. The first way to prevent wrinkles is to use adequate UV protection. Those harsh ultraviolet rays from the sun can damage the DNA in our skin cells, as well as break down collagen and elastin in our skin. So good UV protection is crucial in preventing signs of aging. This study from Australia in 2013 was a randomized control trial to investigate the effects of a supplement called beta carotene and daily sunscreen use on photoaging and the development of wrinkles. They split up 903 research participants into four groups. One group used sunscreen and took 30 milligrams of beta carotene daily. One group used sunscreen daily and took a placebo supplement. One group took the beta carotene supplement daily, and one group took the placebo supplement daily. Those last two groups were advised they can use sunscreen whenever they wanted, instead of being advised to use it every day. The researchers then followed these groups for four and a half years to see the effects of these different treatments on skin aging. They found that beta carotene didn't really have any significant effect on skin aging, but they did find that the subjects who used sunscreen daily showed no detectable increase in skin aging after four and a half years. This is a really nice study because it's quite rare that you follow research participants for such a long time period, in this case, four and a half years. And the finding is quite impressive. I mean, no signs of skin aging over an almost five year time period for the daily sunscreen group. Who knows how much longer the effect could have been extended if they continued to follow these groups out for a longer time period. So based on this study and several others like it, it's not an exaggeration to say that daily sunscreen use can literally halt skin aging. Okay, so that's preventing skin aging. What about sunscreen's effects on reversing skin aging? Well, in this study in the journal Dermatologic Surgery, researchers followed 32 research subjects and had them use SPF 30 sunscreen daily for one week. Dermatologists evaluated their faces at week zero as a baseline, as well as week 12, 24, 36, and 52. They found that patient skin had begun to improve by week 12 and the improvement continued all the way through week 52. Skin parameters such as skin texture, clarity, and pigmentation improved from 40 to 52% compared to baseline evaluations. And they found that 100% of subjects exhibited improvement in skin clarity and texture. They concluded that daily use of broad spectrum sunscreen can not only prevent, but also reverse the signs of existing photoaging. Now, we need to temper our expectations from this study a little bit. If we read the fine print, we see that this research project was funded by Johnson & Johnson, and the authors were all either employed by or paid by Johnson & Johnson. Obviously, J&J &J has commercial interests to tout the incredible effects of sunscreen products. For example, they own the popular Neutrogena line of sunscreens. But I will say there are several studies such as that Australian study and other studies from independent academic institutions which all show the power of sunscreen in preventing wrinkles and photo aging. In the past, I usually only wore sunscreen on days where I knew I would be outside for extended periods of time, like if I was going to the beach or a park. But after reading these studies and the large amount of evidence supporting the daily use of sunscreen, I now incorporate sunscreen use in my daily morning routine. In terms of which type, you want to make sure you use at least SPF 30. That's because SPF 30 sunscreen blocks 96.7% of UV rays from reaching the skin. Compare this to SPF 15, which blocks only 93% of UV radiation. There's no harm in using stronger sunscreens with higher SPF, but SPF 30 is a good minimum baseline which is most commonly recommended by dermatologists, so that's the number you want to remember. One problem with sunscreen I've always struggled with is that sometimes when I apply sunscreen around my eyes, especially if I start to sweat a little bit, is that my eyes can sting, they can become red, irritated, and start tearing. And that's because some chemicals found in many sunscreens have been shown to cause severe eye irritation. Two of the most common offenders are oxybenzone and avobenzone. So those are two ingredients you'll want to avoid when looking for sunscreens for your face, or at least around your eyes. Generally, mineral-based sunscreens which use primarily minerals, such as zinc oxide and titanium dioxide to protect the skin, are safer for use around the eyes. But the thing to keep in mind with these types of sunscreens is that they are generally thicker, pastier, and take a little more effort to rub into the skin. Another secret I recommend, especially if you've had eye burning with other sunscreens, is to use baby sunscreen around the eyes. Baby sunscreens are usually formulated to be tear free, so they can be used to provide great UV protection without the eye related side effects. The next thing you can do to help maintain the appearance of your skin is to get good quality and quantity of sleep. Sleep is therapeutic because it allows your body to repair and rejuvenate itself. Multiple recent studies have shown the strong link between poor sleep and poor skin. In this 2019 study from Korea, researchers took 32 Korean women in their 40s and observed the effects of poor sleep on their skin. They followed these women for two weeks. In the first week, subjects slept eight hours per night, and in the second week, 
subjects slept only four hours per night. They measured each research subject's sleep time using smartwatches to make sure they were sleeping the pre-prescribed amount of time per night. Then, throughout the two weeks, they used specialized sensors and cameras to obtain objective data of patient skin, measuring variables such as skin hydration, skin gloss, elasticity, and wrinkles in the crow's feet and frown line areas. The results are pretty impressive. Here's a graph of facial skin hydration, and you can see as patients were switched from eight hours of sleep to four hours of sleep, skin hydration basically fell off of a cliff and dramatically decreased. For skin gloss, you see the same effect with a decrease beginning just one day after patients were deprived of sleep. Skin transparency increased as well as under eye yellowness and redness. Skin elasticity dropped and continued to keep decreasing further as patients continued to have more sleep deprivation. And wrinkle measurements of crow's feet and frown lines were significantly increased after subjects started sleeping only four hours per night. So all across the board, skin appearance suffered significantly with sleep deprivation. These findings were backed up by another study, this one out of Ohio, which showed basically the same thing. Good sleepers had lower skin aging scores compared to poor sleepers. So it's clear that good quantity and quality of sleep is vital to great skin. We should aim for seven to nine hours of beauty sleep per night. This is the time required for your skin to undertake its nightly renewal, which helps mitigate the impacts of environmental stresses and keeps you looking young. The next lifestyle changes you can make to prevent wrinkles and maintain the appearance of your skin are to avoid smoking and alcohol. This 2019 study surveyed 3,267 women from the US, Australia, Canada, and the UK to investigate whether there was an association between smoking on skin appearance and alcohol consumption on skin appearance. The researchers found that smoking was associated with increased severity of forehead, crow's feet, and 11 wrinkles, as well as under eye puffiness tear trough hollowing, and perioral lines. They also found that heavy alcohol use, which they defined as greater than eight drinks per week, was associated with increased upper facial wrinkles, under eye puffiness, and mid-face volume loss. So both smoking and drinking excessively have been shown to hasten the skin aging process. These results serve as a good reminder that our daily lifestyle choices can have significant effects on our skin, both now and in the future. Making better choices in our daily lives has many positive effects on our health and well-being including helping us keep our skin looking fresh and young. Another way to decrease the appearance of wrinkles is to use good quality moisturizer daily. Moisturizers help to trap the water in our skin to keep our skin soft and hydrated. This will help our wrinkles to be less noticeable, although it won't necessarily prevent wrinkles from forming. And you don't have to equate cost with quality when it comes to skincare products. Even a reasonably priced moisturizer like my personal favorite CeraVe is totally good enough and very effective. By the way, I don't have any financial relationships with any of the products I mentioned in this video. I don't have any affiliate links or anything like that to sell you. So far, we've discussed UV protection, sleep, avoiding alcohol and smoking, and regular moisturizing as some of the most effective ways to prevent and minimize the appearance of wrinkles. I believe these habits should make up the pillars of your skincare protection regimen. Now, we'll talk about some other treatments that have also been shown in clinical studies to be effective in the prevention and treatment of wrinkles, but I'll also explain some of the drawbacks of these interventions. Let's first discuss retinol a key ingredient in many skincare products that has gained popularity. Many anti-aging skincare products revolve around this powerful ingredient because of its reputation for reducing the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Retinol's ability to improve fine lines and wrinkles in aged skin has been highlighted in several research articles. When used regularly, retinol may provide the appearance of younger, healthier skin. But retinoid medications do have some drawbacks. One negative effect that has come to light is an increase in dry eye symptoms. Oral retinoids have been shown to cause atrophy and shrinking of the oil or sebaceous glands in our skin. This helps to clear up the appearance of our skin, but we also have important oil glands in our eyelids called meibomian glands. These meibomian glands help secrete oil into our tears to help prevent our tears from evaporating. So they're important for moisturizing our eyes. And research has shown that oral retinoids not only cause atrophy of our sebaceous glands, but also atrophy of the meibomian glands in our eyelids, causing more severe dry eye symptoms. The development of dry eye syndrome after oral retinoid use is a very real risk for those prone to or already suffering from dry eyes. Now, there actually hasn't been any peer-reviewed or randomized control trials exploring the effects of topical retinols or creams on dry eye disease. But anecdotally, in the experiences of my patients and in my own experience, I found that topical retinols applied around the eyes can and often does make dry eye worse. It's plausible that if you apply a high enough dosage of topical retinoids onto the eyelids for a long enough treatment period that you can induce similar destructive effects to the meibomian glands 
and cause evaporative dry eye disease. So if you do use topical retinoids for their anti-aging properties, I'd recommend keeping at least a two finger width safety zone away from your eyelids where you do not apply any topical retinoids to avoid the potential side effect of meibomian gland atrophy and dry eye disease. And if you already suffer from dry eyes, you may wanna avoid retinols altogether. Okay, the next method we'll consider for keeping skin looking young and healthy are collagen supplements. Collagen is essential to the skin's health and flexibility and is sometimes called the building block of the skin. Unfortunately, with aging, there's degradation of collagen fibers, which contributes to the changes we see in skin aging, such as loss of elasticity, decreased thickness and volume, decreased capacity to retain moisture, as well as increased wrinkles. You've probably seen ads or testimonials about people taking collagen supplements to improve the appearance of their skin, and maybe their hair and nails too. And there has been increasing research interest to figure out whether oral collagen supplements can actually help to improve our skin and prevent signs of aging. So what does the literature say? This is a 2021 review and meta-analysis study from a research team in Brazil. In this study, they analyzed 19 studies looking at 1,125 participants. All the studies they included were randomized double-blind control trials to investigate whether oral hydrolyzed collagen improved the appearance of skin based on parameters such as skin wrinkles, hydration, elasticity, and firmness. Now, a limitation of this review is that there was significant difference in the studies they included for their review. For example, the different collagen supplements in the studies had different dosages, concentrations, formulations, as well as origin. Some of the collagen in the studies came from pigs, while some came from fish, and others chicken. Some people received liquid supplements, and some people took solid supplements. But overall, when adding up all the studies together, they found that most of the studies reported improved skin hydration and elasticity, increased dermal density, and reduced facial wrinkles. They also found that benefits were usually noticed 60 to 90 days after beginning supplementation. They also reported that none of the studies reported adverse effects related to the supplements, which I actually find a little bit hard to believe. I mean, in many randomized control trials, even when you give research subjects a placebo pill, a very small percentage can also report side effects like nausea or GI upset. So it's interesting that in over 1,000 people, not a single person reported a side effect, not even a mild one. But putting everything together in terms of research on collagen supplements, I think the overall finding is that collagen supplementation is effective at helping improve appearance of skin and reducing skin wrinkles and is generally safe. The big issue though is that since these studies are so different in their approaches and because the supplement industry is unregulated, it's unclear to me what the optimal dosage, type, and brand of collagen is for improving skin health. Overall, I think of collagen as one of those additional bonus things you can do to round out your skincare regimen, but definitely not an essential or core component of it. The next treatment we'll talk about is red light therapy. Red light devices and masks have been trendy lately, and there's actually quite a bit of scientific evidence to back it up. The theory behind red light therapy is that red light can boost the function of the mitochondria inside of our skin cells. You can think of the mitochondria as the powerhouse of our cells. So when it's stimulated, the mitochondria can produce more energy for the cell, allowing cells to perform their functions more effectively, such as skin repair, promoting new cell growth, and facilitating skin rejuvenation. Red light is thought to stimulate collagen production, enhance blood circulation to skin tissues, and reduce inflammation within cells. In this study published in 2020, researchers recruited 24 subjects who used a home-use red light LED on the left side of their face twice a week for eight weeks. Researchers typically call these types of studies split face trials because the treatment intervention is applied to one half of the face while no treatment is applied to the other half of the face. After eight weeks, the side of the face which received the red light therapy exhibited improved elasticity and skin texture compared to the untreated side. These findings have been supported by other studies, which have also shown that red light therapy can improve the appearance of wrinkles as well as improve skin hydration and texture. The tricky part with red light therapy though is that you have to commit a lot of time to make it work. Red light therapy is not one of those one-time treatments. Treatment regimens may vary, but generally three to five times per week for 10 to 20 minutes each session are what's recommended. And usually the studies show effects on skin only after several weeks to months of treatment. So all that treatment time can add up quickly compared to say rubbing on sunscreen or moisturizer in the morning. The other thing to keep in mind is that some of these at-home red light therapy devices are quite expensive to the tune of $400 and up. So just like collagen supplements, I view red light therapy more as a supplement or bonus skincare treatment. So in summary, we covered some of the most effective ways to prevent and treat facial wrinkles, including UV protection, adequate sleep, avoiding alcohol and smoking, and regular moisturizing. Other supplemental treatment options include topical retinol, collagen supplements, and red light therapy. I hope this review was useful to you. If you find the information in this video helpful, please give us a like and subscribe to the channel for future updates. 
I'm Dr. Michael Chua with Puente Hills Eye Care. See you next time.